Kuwaita Highway is a long and lonely stretch of mountainous road traversing the Man River and Gibraltar Range. The single lane highway spans 160 kilometres between the townships of Grafton and Glen Innes, through remote rugged ranges and deep valleys. It's mostly undisturbed. On the Grafton side of the highway to the east, the AYR has recently reported on Yowie sightings from Coots Crossing, South Grafton, Tacabia, Lawrence Halfway Creek, and even a photo taken further north at Evans Head. To the west side of the Guaida is Glen Innes, Dundee, Deepwater and Emmerville. Not only known for Yowie sightings, but also large black cats, suspected to be panthers. Panther sightings began in Emmerville and many other areas of Australia, making national news as early as the 1800s. This totally debunks the sole cliché concept of the origin of the Australian panther being from the release of US panther mascots towards the end of World War II. Domestic cats were initially introduced to Australia on the first ships landing on our shores, and rapidly spread. Could these so-called panthers be feral cats, mutated due to survival and evolution over time? Did actual panthers escape from international travellers, or circuses during the 1800s? Or were they already here? But just like the Yowie and Thylacine, they're reported in the thousands. Lying between both Grafton and Glen Innes, and surrounded by thousands of square kilometres of mountainous terrain, is an old mining town which has its own history of the Yowie. Yet another location you could live your entire life never being discovered, if that was your choice. This small and remote township harbours only 92 residents. Yeah, it's for this reason, not wanting to be recognised in a small community. Today's witness has requested her voice to be disguised. And it's here. I'll hand you to AYR's Sarah Bignall. As I say, welcome to Jack Edgery. The thing is, I felt like I should tell someone, even my daughter who didn't want anyone to know, said, should we tell someone? And I said, there's nobody to tell. No one's going to believe us, you know, and you're better off just keeping your mouth shut. And and I think a lot of people would feel like that. I'm so glad uh, you reached out to us, though. Why don't you tell me what happened? Just go through from well, what were you doing and what you saw in detail, if you can. Yeah. Okay, it's um, 10.30 at night, a Thursday night, I think it was it was right at the end of February 2013, and I think it's relevant. We had three months of really heavy rainfall above average, and we'd had two floods in five weeks, and this day we'd had an afternoon thunderstorm followed by six hours of just steady but non-stop rain. So it's a really dark night. There's no moon, no stars, just a miserable night. And the ground was so saturated. There's a bridge on our road and I was really worried it would go under and I wouldn't get home. My daughter was 15 and she worked part-time after school. I'd gone in, picked her up and we're heading home and we turned into the road we live in. And I said to my daughter, put your phone down and watch out for kangaroos. You know, she did. And it stopped raining. It finally stopped raining. And 200 metres down the road is a right-hand corner. So we're approaching the corner and the headlight going straight ahead into the paddock. Just to the left, there's a clump of bushes with a couple of little trees. And it looked like a man. I thought it was a man wearing a brown hoodie sort of came out of the bushes and he's sort of striding along the fence line. And I said to my daughter, who's that in the paddock? Because, you know, dark, wet night, I didn't expect to see anybody running around the paddock. And we're sort of trying to look and I'm trying to dodge potholes and 
I'm going started going around the corner, and as I'm turning the corner, this you know I'm thinking it's a man. He's sort of gone behind a little tree. It was just a skinny tree, and he's come out the other side, but he stopped. And I don't know why. I just stopped the car, and the lights had sort of swept past him, but they were just throwing out enough light that he could make out this black shape of a man, and it looked like he'd turned his back to us. So I'm starting to think, this guy's probably trying to steal out of sheds, you know, so I'm not impressed. He was sort of shuffling around under the tree. I said, what's he doing? It didn't look right. It looked off. It just didn't look right. And my daughter's not saying anything. And, you know, I'm just sort of staring at him. And then you could see him turn on his side and started going back the way he'd come. And he's gone behind the tree and he's come out the other side. And I just drew the car in reverse and got my headlights right on him. I'm thinking, I'm going to nail this thieving bastard, you know. Anyway, it's on the other side of the tree now and it's stopped. And it's it's not a man. I don't know what I'm looking at. And, yeah, it's sort of, it's not completely side on to us. It was sort of at a little bit of an angle towards us. It's just standing there, totally motionless, not moving a muscle, looking straight ahead. I'm thinking, you know, what what is this? That's all, all I could sort of think is, what is this? This is, isn't a man. And then we're just sort of staring at it. My daughter still hasn't said anything. As we're watching it, just looked ahead for ages, and then it slowly started lifting its head up, really just like millimetre by millimetre, very slowly lifted its head up until it was staring straight up above it, straight up at the sky. And I suppose it sort of stared at the sky for maybe 10, 15 seconds. It seemed like forever at the time. And then it really slowly brought its head back down until it was looking straight ahead again. But when it raised and lowered its head, the headlights caught its eyes and they just started glowing and that just <laughs> that just freaked me out, you know. <laughs> I'm sort of trying to process what I'm looking at, but when it was looking straight ahead and when it was looking straight up at the sky, its eyes looked normal. There were no glasses or goggles or anything, you know. Um, its eyes were just normal. And then it started turning towards us. So now we're sitting in the car. This thing's right in front of us, staring straight at us, and its eyes are just glowing. It's just got these huge glowing eyes. By now, I, you know, I remember thinking, what the f***, you know, and, and I sort of froze. And... I don't know how long we looked at it. It was probably only, you know, maybe a minute, but it seemed like forever. My daughter said in this really low voice, really quietly, what are we looking at? I sort of snapped out of it, and that's when I realised that I was terrified, and, and I thought, you know, we've got to get out of here, and... I started driving and I said, said to my daughter, I think we just saw Bigfoot. And she said, that's what I thought it was. And like, I'm trying to run away for our lives and the road's in such a bad condition. I can only do about 20 k's. And I'm thinking this thing's going to just jump out in front of us and start smashing windows and ripping doors off, you know. I'm really trying to be calm, but I'm really freaking out. It doesn't look like anything. You can't say it's not a man, it's not a gorilla or an ape. It had a nose, but it wasn't prominent like most people's. It was flatter. I can't remember seeing lips. It had a mouth line, but I don't remember actual lips. And I don't remember seeing ears, but that could have been under the hair. I've seen things on TV where these creatures are, are really dark brown, but this wasn't dark brown. It was a lighter brown and sort of a tanny red tinge to it. 
Yeah, and of course it's eyes glowing in the dark. And even though it had just stopped raining like seconds before we saw it, it didn't look wet. I couldn't see any water dripping on it at all. So it's got some sort of really good waterproof fur or hair. I tried to sort of pace out from where we saw it to where we would have been sitting in the car. I think it was roughly about 12 to 14 metres in front of us from just pacing it out. Daughter thought, she reckoned it would have been at least seven foot. I thought maybe six and a half to seven foot. If it helps the top wire on the fence is sort of chest high on me and the top wire on this thing would have been i'd say lower hips arms were by its side but it just looked really big and strong yeah something you wouldn't want to reckon with (laughs) but about 18 months after we saw this thing i saw a show on tv about bigfoot and there was a man in america they interviewed him on this show he claims he shot and injured a bigfoot and shot and killed a juvenile bigfoot they sat him down with an fbi sketch artist the sketch artist drew what he described to her that he had shot I called my daughter out to come and watch this program with me and what he described and what the sketch artist drew was nearly exactly the same as what we saw. My daughter and I both agreed that's that's what we had seen. The only difference I could pick up was in the sketch, they sort of had some creases across the nose and the one we saw didn't have any creases across its nose. But if I had to somehow label it, I'd say it was something like a caveman cross orangutan, a young orangutan or something like that. But there's no name for it. Where it was, it's just too exposed. It it wouldn't live there. Further out, you've got the Arara River, that was in flood, you know, there's Man River that was in flood, the Clarence, there's a lot of creeks, we've got gullies that turn just into raging floodwaters when they, you know, when we get rain like that, and I just thought maybe it had been um, cut off by floodwaters and was trying to find another way back to where it came from. I had heard of three other sightings in the area several years beforehand two sightings were close together um someone was in a house and she smelt something she said it was the most disgusting smell so she looked out the window thinking that the dogs had dragged up a dead kangaroo or something this creature was drinking out of a water trough for the cows she said as she watched it, it just stood up. She said she'd never seen anything move so fast. And she thought it was about seven foot tall. A few weeks later, someone else working on the property, they were working in the paddock, and this thing walked out of the tree line, walked along in front of the tree line for a short distance, then disappeared back into the trees. They think it realised someone had seen it, but I think it might have been trying to get to the water again. During this drought, like all the creeks had dried up, people's dams had dried up, and I think it was forced to look for water. You know, honestly, anything could live out there. Anything. I know there. someone said there was a sighting of like a Bigfoot with two juvenile Bigfoots near Jack Adry on the river. That was several years back. And we have have reports from uh, Coots Crossing in 2015, Lawrence in 2017, in in 2016. Uh, I know my husband was told a timber cutter what I'd seen. He said the timber cutter didn't look surprised or disbelief. 
All he said was, I see a lot of strange things when I'm out cutting timber and I don't tell anybody what I see. I think that was sort of acknowledging that there are things out there. Another sighting, even before the one, the two sightings in the drought, someone was out walking their horse along one of the stock routes out the back. That's a few k's behind where I saw this one. And um, he said this thing just walked straight out onto the track and was walking along in front of him. And he was just walking his horse, you know, along. And he said it just got to a fence and jumped it like it was nothing, just cleared the fence and took off really fast. With the creature that you saw, what colour were those glowing eyes? My daughter swears they were green. I saw them as a yellowy green. They definitely weren't red because there was a thing on TV only a few weeks ago where someone said in to some footage from Australia to that paranormal caught on camera show and they showed these red eyes and I know people take photos of you and you have red eyes but this was definitely well my, my daughter said they were definitely green I saw them as a yellowy green we get reports of green of yellowy green of red of orange of kind of a blue iridescent electric blue colour. So we do get lots of variety in that eye colour. Between six and seven foot tall, the hair is a light brown but with a tan reddish tinge. Yeah. It was big and strong. Did you get a feeling of whether it was male or female? Could not tell. I I would have thought male. I couldn't see any sort of um, mammary glands or anything. I don't know what you'd call them. I just thought it was a man, mainly because it was big and it was really striding when we first saw it. You braked and you slowed down and then you put the car in reverse so you could get the headlights on what you thought was some guy up to. Stealing. Did you see the face? Did you get an idea of whether there was hair on the face or, or expressions on the face? Saw its face. You know, when it turned straight towards us, it was just looking straight at us. And it didn't look threatening, what, shaking its arms at us or making any threatening gestures. It was just standing there totally still. It didn't show teeth or anything aggressive like that. Didn't look like it was trying to make noises at us or anything threatening at all. And its nose was flatter than a normal person's. And it's, you know, these huge glowing eyes, that sort of haunted me for a long time, seeing those huge glowing eyes. Not much hair around its eyes and across its nose and across those cheeks, you know, under its eyes. Less hair there. I can only think of like like a a young orangutan, finer hair. and and maybe a little bit leathery looking under its eyes. What colour was the skin? A bony beige sort of colour. Not that much different from the hair. There wasn't like a definite hairline. It was like it just got thinner, sparser, thinner and sparser, and sort of just had this skin around its, um, directly around its eyes and top of its cheeks and nose. What about down the chest? Could you see skin on the chest or was it all hair? No, no. All I could see was hair. How long do you reckon the hair was? It wasn't like it was really shaggy and it sort of looked quite flat. Not groomed so much, but it wasn't sort of frizzy and mucked up, you know, like um, a dog's coat sort of lies flat. It was sort of like that, I don't know, maybe a couple of inches. I just sort of froze. My daughter didn't really want to talk about it. She she was, you know, at 15, she was worried her friends would find out and think she was crazy. When you hit it with your headlights full on, it didn't turn around to look at you straight away, did it? Did the head, it raised its head to the sky side on? 
yeah, it just froze, you know, like a kangaroo will freeze. Mm-hmm. It'll just just stood there, staring straight ahead, not moving at all. And then it really, it was so slowly lifted its head, you know, and just stared at the sky for ages, then brought its head back down and stared straight ahead for a while and then turned towards us. You guys had actually stopped the car by that stage and you just giving it your headlights. Yeah, yeah, I stopped when it went behind the tree and came out the other side and stopped. That's when I stopped the car because I'm still thinking, what's this guy doing in the paddock? And my daughter had realised, because she recognised hair, you know, she sort of realised something was wrong. It wasn't a man. So I just sort of stopped. But then when it turned its back to us and doing this weird shuffling about, it was sort of in one spot, but sort of moving around, sort of moving in the one spot. It just looked really weird, you know, and that's when I said to my daughter, what is it doing? It didn't look like a normal reaction from a person. If it was a thief, someone trying to steal stuff, all he had to do was crouch down and we would have driven past and never seen him. If it was a local, you know, someone that lives here, they'd give you a wave, you know. And then when it sort of turned and started walking back the way it came, that's that's when I sort of just threw the car in reverse and got the headlights on it. And, and that's when I realised that this, you know, it's not a man, something, something else. else. And yeah. then, so once you, you've looked at it for a little while, you just put the car in gear and, and got out of there. Yeah, when my daughter said to me, what are we looking at? I just sort of snapped out of it. I was sort of just frozen, staring at this thing. And that's when I realised, you know, we're in danger. We've got to get out of here. I had nightmares for about three weeks. The next night, I had to pick my daughter up from work again, you know, and I'm watching TV. I'm fine. And then I thought, God, it's time to go. I'd better go and get her. Ran outside, jumped in the car, went to start the car, and I... I just thought, my God, what if this thing's up the road again? And I was sort of really starting to freak out. I don't want to drive up there, you know, in the dark. I was sort of on the verge of a panic attack. I had to get my daughter. I couldn't have her sort of standing on the side of the road waiting for me in the dark. It's just something It really, it was like it was in my head for ages. I, I sort of couldn't get it out of my head. You keep thinking, we should tell people. People should know this thing's out there. They need to be careful. At that point, I'd lived there for 30 years. I walk every day, and I I used to walk for miles out along the stock routes. And there was about four different tracks I used to use out through the bush. And people used to say to me, don't you get scared walking out there? And I said, no, there's nothing out here to worry about. And after seeing this thing, I stopped walking. I just walk around my own property now. My son and I used to mountain bike out along these stock routes, take our motorbikes out there. You know, I didn't have a drama at all about it. You know, I've always felt really safe out out here. I've always felt 100% safe. I spend a lot of time by myself out here and, you know, a lot of nights by myself and never had a worry. Even now, sometimes I'll just get creeped out for some reason. I'll shut the curtains. We don't have neighbours nearby, but... So it's left you with this sort of feeling of unease, hasn't it? Not feeling as safe as you used to. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm a lot more careful. There is something out there. Again, we hear of the reported colour of the Yowie resembling that of an orangutan with similar actions and reactions described from previous witnesses. Our witness mentioned an initial suspicion it may have been a human stealing from their sheds. It's not often we hear of Yowie sightings during rain, with the exception of report number 34 from Lamington National Park in Queensland. Was it attempting to take cover from the rain in the sheds? dark cloud of hush 
such as the timber cutter saying he's witnessed many strange things while cutting timber in the forests, but doesn't feel comfortable talking about it. It's a familiar aspect in small towns. Or if they do, often the stories never leave that town. This isn't the first witness to say it's changed his or her life in a dramatic way, in terms of interaction and how they view the Australian bush. From feeling safe to scared and vulnerable, for both mother and daughter, witnessing this hominid will remain in their memories forever. Thankfully, this witness has spoken out, sharing information that helps us all build our knowledge of what we term as the Yowie. Thanks for listening.